Hey guys, it's Luthien, and along with Emerus, we are Girls with Sabres. This is part two of our Divine Couples series, where we will be following Dante through the rest of the Inferno and on into Purgatory. Quick shout out to the people who mentioned my mispronunciation of the name Eurydice. Sincerely, thank you so much for pointing that out to us. It forces us to remember to thoroughly check and check again. We are very well versed in many areas, but Greek mythology was an area that I needed to be a quick study on for this podcast. And it's not a mythology I am super well versed in, like other mythologies, so thank you for gently correcting me in the comments. May the force be with all of you, and enjoy the podcast. So, back to back to uh, Dante and Virgil. So, they make it uh, to the center uh, where Satan is, because he has sinned the ultimate sin. He is a treachery against God. He is described as a beast with three faces, uh, six wings, and is eternally weeping from six eyes. So you can see that it's the number six symbolism all throughout that. Hell is this, or the, the center is this frozen state. It was the ninth circle, but the circles are cylinders in a triangle. And right. the deepest you go down the triangle like elevators scene, yeah. the deepest you go mm-hmm. is going to be the lowest, like the throne of Satan is actually yeah. the, the lowest point of the yes. triangle. Yes. Um, but it's icy instead of heat. And Correct. And that's why the, Satan is, is further, further, and further, and further away from the love of God. Yep. So and it's the colder you so, get. Very like Pluto <laughs> metaphor there. So it's very much like a lack of warmth, a lack of nourishment, a Mm -hmm. lack of life. And even life itself freezes down there. Mm -hmm. Traitors that are there, they're completely frozen or their Mm -hmm. eyes are frozen. Or Most of their bodies are submerged and there's only a few extremities that are left. Like their mouth, their nose um, are uh, above the surface of this frozen state. It's but they're suffering below. It's essentially star killer base. Yes, yes. The snow, mm-hmm. the ice, the yep. winter. Right at that lowest level, that's where Kylo killed Han mm-hmm. at Star Killer Base. Yes, yeah. So he went even further down into mm-hmm. the pit. So you see, you never have Kylo being in the same room as Snoke in the Force mm-hmm. Awakens. Yep. So he has never really entered in the films. Right. He's never really entered in the throne room of Snoke. Mm-hmm. He actually gets to the very throne of Snoke in The Last Jedi. Because yes. he became more of a traitor when he duels Finn. He pulls out a saber and he goes, traitor! Yep, projecting. Han Solo can't save you. He is yep. saying that about himself. himself. Yep. He is calling himself a traitor. He is saying that his father couldn't save him because mm-hmm. he wouldn't let his father save him. He yep. chose the darker path. So Kylo is in this frozen, lifeless state. Mm-hmm. You even see that he's in a stagnant state. Yep. Um, he is a boy. He's a child in a mask, which means he has never matured. Mm -hmm. And when you're in icy state, you are frozen. Your life is frozen. So there is so much symbolism about that. So, Which still goes back to what I said about both patricide uh, moments being horrific. Still, Ben killing Han is patricide and it is horrific and it was and it was a treasonous moment as far as the family and the heart is concerned okay continue um, sorry <laughs> no, that's okay that's okay um i'm going to shout a person out mm. this was a comment a long long time ago when we made our dark damer in volume two Ho is the wicked man gaston of this galaxy yeah yeah that seems like a lifetime ago i know but to a waterfowl made this statement and it blew my mind. She stated, Ben is the solidified as this trilogy's Leia, the stuck up prince on a journey of unfreezing his softer and emotional side. You see that imagery of him 
freezing that emotion because that's what Snoke says. Mm -hmm. Your compassion is your weakness. So he has that frozen state just like Leia. But what actually melted Leia's heart is seeing Han being frozen in carbonite. Mm -hmm. And as soon as she declares her love for him, she rescues him. You know, he's like, who is this? And he, she says, someone who loves you. And yep. she kisses him. Yep. You see how love melted that frozen state. So awesome. And I need to remove a pin. And mm-hmm. that one pin was about uh, Han touching Ben's cheek. Yes. So Alice still responded to a waterfowl. Um, about the unfreezing journey of Ben Solo. And she mm. says, oh, wait, everyone, grab a hold of your tea because this might shake the tables. So let's go. Mm. She says, I love that you use the term unfreezing here in terms of Ben because Han's touch to Ben's cheek, <gasps> a warm touch, the scarring of sad cheek, slightly warmer, Always put me in mind of Han's return and Return of the Jedi as we see the rays of light emanating from his face as the carbonite melts away. Oh, oh my God. We, Raylos, our community, there is brilliance in this community. The <laughs> amount of symbolism and metaphor abounds. Abound, it, and it takes a village. Yes, like, it takes a village yep. to see all these details and to share mm-hmm. all these details. Yep, and I loved reading it. Oh my gosh, amen. So, Alice still into a waterfowl. Yep, hats off to you. That yay, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was clapping on my notes. <laughs> yay. <laughs> When you enter hell, there is a sign above the door that says, all ye who enter here, abandon hope. Yes. yes. And that's basically been solo. In order for Kylo to get to that level of hell, he had to snuff out Ben Solo. He embodies yes. hope. Mm-hmm. So. But he could never, he could never do it. Just yeah. like we were saying when. Snoke is chiding him afterwards and he gets up after being shot with lightning. Snoke says, hope still remains in the galaxy. And the minute he says that, the camera flips on to Kylo and he stands up and right as he says hope. So it's like hope, boom, Ben Solo. Yes. Stands up. Oh my God. And that's why he can't, he can exit out of hell. Yeah. Because he has not fully become a beast and a monster Mm -hmm. the people that drag him down like snoke keep on saying hey you belong here you belong Mm -hmm. with us beasts and us monsters going back dante and virgil escape hell and they uh make their way now they are going up into the other half of the diamond now so they're making their way to mount purgatory Mount Purgatory is an island that is at the dawn of a new day. This this uh, section of the poem, it picks up right where Inferno left off. Dante is about to climb Mount Purgatory, uh, learning, and I starred this, learning the lessons and cleansing himself of sin in preparation for ascending to heaven. I'm going to kind of equate that to what we're going to see at the beginning of episode nine, where we feel Ben is going to go on this journey, trying to learn more, searching for relics, just kind of like how Luke did. But now he needs answers because there's no one else. He can't talk to Luke anymore. Ray can't go to Luke for these answers. They have to go to each other. Ben needs to find answers. And along the way, he's going to learn some things. He's already learning. I feel he started learning this a little bit at the end of The Last Jedi, but he definitely has to start the cleansing process. And the cleansing process was started at Crate. Yeah, Luke certainly started the cleansing process, but now we're going to see that 
snowball. Before they even get to the steps of purgatory, they have to pass through anti-purgatory. On that way, they, they meet other souls who are making the climb too. So there's a little bit of learning there. It isn't um, magnanimous as far as the actual purgatory level goes, but there is some symbolism there. So you could definitely equate The Last Jedi to be an anti-purgatory. You already have the the resurrection of Rey removing the rocks from the tomb. And all Ben has to do is, is walk out from that tomb. So you have the Christ sacrifice of Rey at the very bottom of hell. Of going down in a coffin. Um, actually paying the price for Kylo's mm-hmm. sins. She's literally raised above Kylo in a crucified state. Well, she's made her ascension. If there are two halves of the protagonist, then they both have to go on their own separate journeys yeah, of but, descent and ascent. And she now has ascended. Yeah, she's a, because she, you know, she's now the resurrected Jedi, basically. Yes. Mm-hmm. Virgil couldn't go anymore. He's stuck in that state. Only Beatrice ascends. So they pass through anti-purgatory, meeting the souls uh, who are making the climb to finally Dante and Virgil make it to the gate and to the angel guarding it. So this is the gate into main purgatory. The angel carves seven peas into Dante's forehead, representing the seven deadly sins he has to walk through. So these, these sins are in the form of seven terraces they have to start and end at. Um, With each passing level, an angel removes one of the marks from Dante's head, meaning the lesson has been learned. He goes through the first couple terraces, lessons are learned, and after each each level, an angel removes the pee from his forehead. Um, The fourth terrace I starred, because that is of sloth or slothfulness, Virgil explains how love determines the structure of purgatory And throughout their journey through this terrace, Virgil continues to lecture on love and free will. And the whole message of Star Wars is love. So I found that fourth terrace to be very important as far as Dante's journey. Getting to the fifth terrace, that is Aphoritius and Prodigal, Dante and Virgil see penitence and their punishment And after this moment on the fifth terrace, I like completely circled this. Suddenly, Mount Purgatory trembles. We come to find out that this happens every time a penitent soul becomes completely purged and ready to ascend to heaven. And not saying that this happens only on the fifth terrace. That's just when a soul on whatever level uh, comes to this moment But wouldn't it just be insane if the whole, like, could a cosmic tremble happen when Ben Solo is purged of Kylo Ren and is ready to ascend? Like, the whole, the whole galaxy trembles. There's this absolute boom moment. And there's this shake, like, oh, I I just, that's immediately what I thought of when I read this passage. You know how the supremacy um, goes right down, split to the center, right when the saber is split in the center? Yes. If you look at the supremacy, that's basically the division of pride and light escaping from pride. Like, <gasps> like Kylo was purged from pride right at that moment. Oh, my God. Because he thought he had that saber claimed. Like, he thought he could pull it, but he can't. Mm -hmm. You know, they need Ray and Ben to come together, not out of pride, not out of supremacy, but together. And, you know, I, I, at the very beginning of The Last Jedi, you hear when you see the supremacy show up to fire on the base, you Mm -hmm. hear Kylo's theme, but Kylo does not make an appearance. I think the supremacy is named after Kylo Ren. Because that is one of the sins he has to climb over is the sin of egotism and pride. That's what keeps him from being with Ray. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So finally, 
Dante, Virgil, make it through to the last terrace. At sunset, the travelers reach the exit to the seventh terrace, and an angel removes the final pea from Dante's forehead. But in order to leave the terrace, and again, I circled this like a mad woman. Dante must walk through a wall of flames. Can we say a phoenix metaphor? Just just throwing that out there. It says he hesitates with fear, but Virgil lures him through with the promise that he will see Beatrice on the other side. Past the fire, Dante sleeps. In the morning, Virgil announces Dante's readiness for the earthly paradise. So finally now, Dante gets to ascend into the last section, which is heaven. And he sees his ray of light. (laughs) When Dante looks upon Beatrice, he becomes spiritually invigorated. Beatrice makes him feel godlike. And isn't that just every time Ben looks, looks at Ray? I mean, you talk about Luke looking at her in the force and she's this beacon of, of light and, Just everything is attuned to her. Dante looks upon Beatrice the same way. Beatrice is Dante's ray of light. I just want to say before we start, what I love about Beatrice and Dante is Beatrice. Ooh, what was that? And there is like a grate right by our house. So when it drives by, it makes that sound. Oh, okay. Got it. Sorry. I was like, no. That was Ben Solo's heart falling when he sees Ray. That was the tremble of uh, making it through, <laughs> getting the cleanse. Yeah. That was a tremble through the force. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Beatrice means the beloved, the one who is worthy of love, the one that should be loved. Um, and Beatrice was named after the love of Dante's life. Mm -hmm. In literature and in real life, he first saw Beatrice um, as a child and still loved her. I just love that, that though, uh, they met as children and he was insanely awkward and like ran away from her. (laughs) But then he went home and wrote about her. Uh, So he never had the courage to really talk to her. Ended up where she was betrothed to someone else. She ended up marrying him. <clears throat> and this is in the real real world, uh, but scholars, they've kind of come to the conclusion that that Beatrice who lived in Florence or whatever is the Beatrice he was writing about. Oh, there is no doubt. Right. Well, there used to be. There used to be doubt, and now they've come to, and when I say now, this was like years ago, but it is now of the, the same vein that that is the Beatrice he was writing about. <clears throat> that's so that's so funny to me because like you and I know as women, uh, that has to be her. I mean that's oh just, god yeah yeah I mean totally. Just, come on, scholar. Sometimes you get a little bit too big for your britches, and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Beatrice is in the realm of paradise, and she is definitely the angel, and she has been petitioning Virgil, which we see as Luke. To go help this pilgrim, her luminous eyes and angelic voice petitioned Virgil to lead the pilgrim on the right path and receive him from the wandering in the, the wilderness of the forest and from a life of disordered desires, leading him away from the way to paradise. Go then, and with the beauty of your words and any skill you have to set him free, help him that I may be consoled and I think that was so much like Ray. Oh my gosh, yes. Asking Luke to help him. And and Luke's like, I can't. This is not my job. I can't. I can only take him through so much of his life's journey until I'm not the one to heal him. But you, the beloved, you are. Mm -hmm. Um, Beatrice will assume the role of Dante's mentor and educate him in the truths of faith. After Virgil enlightens his reason with the truth of classical wisdom. So there Mm -hmm. you have being the person that educates him in the laws of love. And you have Virgil educating him, uh, Luke, educating Ben 
and the ways of the Jedi. Yep. Shanta, he was mute with all and melts. There again, that's that word of no longer Melting. having ice yep. or snow. Yep. Melts by the great power of all its ancient love. So. Oh, man. Dante feels a sense of unworthiness when Beatrice confronts him with direct speech and severe words that remind him of a mother reproaching her son. You know, because of Leia's death, yes. Ray is going to have that nurturing but mm-hmm. teaching role. I think what's going to happen is because Ben went through the Inferno, through the teaching of the Sith and the Jedi and the force he has the classical education he has that what ray has is love and mercy and hope and how to fix broken things and how to reproach someone like him so i think that's when they're gonna flip right there is ray is going to teach ben the ways of love where you see that in, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. you see that even just in that glimpse of uh, that J.J. Abrams posted that picture, or John Boyega posted the picture of uh, Finn, Poe, and Ray. They're all hugging. Uh, Daisy, John, and, and Oscar were all hugging on the set. They obviously, they're in this desert area. You know, speculations abound as to if J.J. did film in order, was that... Uh, you know, the last scene he shot, they shot, or was it the first scene? You know, who knows? But point being, we see the back of Daisy's head. Her hair, she's got those three buns back, but now they are all in, they are all connected. They are all, like, they look fused together, and it's a very... It's a very mature look, way more mature than the three single buns going down the back of her head. So I truly believe in episode nine, we're going to see Ray more mature. Everyone's going to be probably more mature uh, by the end of this, obviously, but Ray will definitely be more mature. She's going to be more of this woman. She's going to have this woman, womanly look about her, a greater feminine look to her. Not that she's not going to learn things, but again, she has practically completed her hero's journey. So now that maturation of the adolescence has been fulfilled. Yeah, she still has to balance the force with Ben, but her maturation journey is practically complete. She she completed her uh, monomyth cycle. She's yes. now the hero. She's yes. now the goddess. But yes. she part of her journey is to help Yes. Her Dante. However, yes. he has all the intellectual knowledge of the ways of the Jedi, the ways right. of the Force. So she still needs that. She because, still needs that. Yes. yes. They're only the half of the protagonist. So they need each other. They need, they are going to be the divine couple. The black diamond. Again, yes. it's two yes. triangles merging together yep. to form the black diamond. Hello, this is Emrys, and with Luthien, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell icon that will give you notifications every time we post a new one. And of course, like, comment, and do all those things. <laughs> Peace, love, and Raylo, guys. All magic comes with a price.